Well, as I tell you, lots of the problems in that in that area. But the kind of just just problems in the area, we see that. But you know, yeah, also we understand the significance of the point which you have made, which is a very significant point for constitutional democracy. That ultimately the party is supreme. Yeah. And legislators get there into the house or the parliament or the legislative assembly on the mandate of the party, what the party means to the people. Right. Right. Therefore, you are really elected as a representative of the party. Your behavior must be governed by what the party dictates. Right. And a group of legislators, whether you are one third or one tenth or, or even 75 percent. That's right cannot be really determinative of the wishes of the parties. You can alter that position if the party authorizes you Correct. or you leave the party. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, that power, that's a very significant point which you have made. But I understand. The point the, point, the, the next, next point, point, I mean, what's the consequence? Yeah, I, I will, but I understand. Which you are, which you are try, really telling us that, look, the facts you tear you in the face. Now, why go to the speaker? Okay. Yes, that's what I'm, that's what my submission is. What is it that the speaker is going to do in this? It it could be twofold. One, as you say, well, the speaker himself cannot be trusted as an as an impartial arbiter. I I withdraw that, brother, because because we are talking about the constitutional right. position. Right. The second would be the second would be where the facts are so clear. Yeah. Then you take the decision with yeah. the speaker ought to have decided that there is only one and one conclusion. That's right. That, Mr. Sibyl, honestly, Sibyl, that is right. that is a matter of disquiet for uh, speaking for myself. I mean, should the court be taking into that uh, I, I, entering into that area? That's that's an area of lordships have been persuaded in the past. I hope to persuade you in the that, future. That's right. There are very serious ramifications. No, just as yours, you know the ramifications. I will, I will, but as address your lordships. The ramifications which you have referred to for constitutional democracy, if individual legislators start bucking the party discipline. We, there are very serious ramifications that we start taking over these functions. Very you dangerous. Know. No, you, well, as what happened was um, very, uh, in one particular case, which is the Constitution bench, well, as, where they said that this illegality cannot be continued even for a day. So we will take the decision. Because the they are occupying the post of the minister. This cannot continue even for a day. I will not send it back. This we will, we will right take it. wrong. This is the system which we have now assumed to ourselves as we the people. And when the courts try and breach the system, there's a, it's a very... No, no, I, I, Munez, I understand. You know, that's what is worrying us. I Munez, mean, I, I, up, I, put I, it to you right up. Quite uh, frankly, quite frankly, a constitutional court should be worried because if you create this as a precedent, it can happen in other situations as well. And that not be a good precedent. But I am not disputing that. Please, please, I'm not, I, I know the limitations of a constitutional court. I know that, Mullahs. But what has happened in this case, unfortunately, is that this has happened because of a judicial order. Possibly, you, your it. argument would be, if the, until the speaker is deciding, no trust vote. Let them take a decision first and then, because the trust vote... Will because be everything helped there after that happened because of this order. But therefore, if you have to restore the situation as it stands immediately before the order, interim order of this court, we can restore it by saying that, well, the, the speaker has to take a thesis. Right. Right. Yes. yes. Had they incurred a disqualification. Yes. But we, it would be very difficult for us to take over that function. Well, that's, I don't mind, Malala. Let that deputy speaker decide. I have no problem with that. That's what happened. And therefore, which, which so deputy which, speaker? Which the speaker, Malala, who was denied the, who was denied the right to continue the, with the disqualification. This has happened in the other case. So then we restore a putative state of affairs. Yes, your lordships have done that. overtaken by events. In Nabam Remia, your lordships have done exactly that. Because when I argued this before the, the, the constitution bench then, I said, my lords, what is happening is you let things happen and then you will tell me later that we can't reverse it. He said, no, we will reverse Mr. it. Sibyl, then you support Nabam Remia's course of action when it suits you. And when Nabam Rebia is creating a problem, you wanted to... No, Mala, that because there are two different issues in Nabam Rebia, Mala. Well, I'm sorry, Mala. Yeah. You can't put that argument. No, no, we are not, not at all. <laughs> there are two different issues. No, Mala, in fact, I was wondering when your lordships are going to decide to refer it to seven yeah. because this is this is a real problem. That's, that's intrinsically at the heart of the matter, which is why I said you take it up as, an, as, as, a, as a preliminary uh, submission. Because ultimately, this can only be decided. Number one, your lordships have not noticed that Gugavale was appointed as the whip from Assam. If your lordships agree with me as a proposition of law, 
that the whips cannot be appointed in this fashion. Ultimately, the speaker, once that government is formed on the third, recognizes Gagavale. Right, Mullahs? And then I am issued, our, our legislators are issued a notice for disqualification on the 8th of July. If your lordships agrees with my proposition of law that whips cannot be appointed in this fashion, then our notices should be quashed by this court. Subsequent notices, your yeah. notice. Under 21B or 21A. Yes. Against us, notices against us. Correct, correct, correct. Yes, 21B. Two, 21B. Two, yes. But they, they are virtually uh, non-issue, right? No, it's not a non-issue, Mara. There's a notice of disqualification against me with that I, because they say Gogavale, ex, Gogavale gave a whip. You are right. You are right. right. So, Mara, it's a live issue. The legislators, uh, legislators uh, whip. Correct. Not the political party. Yes, yes, legislators whip. So, Mara, therefore, my request to your lordships is that that notice for disqualification must be struck down by your lordship. If your lordships, of course, agree that you cannot appoint a whip from outside. But that's the direct challenge also. Yes, we've challenged that. In that your you challenge. Yes, I've challenged that, Mullahs. Now, one more point, Mullahs. Your Lordships, Mullahs, in September, when a whole petition was argued that the Election Commission should not proceed, your Lordship said, no stay. Fine, Mullahs, no stay. We went back, Mullahs, what happened was we thought, and this is my, Mullahs, we interpreted that order to mean that the proceeding before the commission shall go on. Fine, Mullahs, let them go on. The problem arose that we told the commission, if you take this test of organization and representation in the legislature, you necessarily will have to include 38 or 39. And therefore, if you take that into account, your outcome your result will may be that they get the symbol. But that very matter is pending before the Supreme Court about the disqualification of these 39. So please stay your hands and let the Supreme Court decide. Now, I personally feel Miller, that was not counter, it was not antithetical to your lordships. After all, the Election Commission has, has also to decide in accordance with law. The result was, I mean, this is again the sad part of it, the result was. The commission says, I'm not going to bother about the organization. These 39 members are majority, therefore they get the symbol. In fact, your lordship's order was misused. No, I'm not asking, Malas. I'm really saying the commission said, the high court said, Supreme Court has said no state, therefore they have to decide. That needs to be tested in those proceedings, no? No, that's not, but, but kindly see the consequences, Malas. Kindly see how we are hurt. That's why the reference, what is the scope of powers of the election commission in respect of determination, determination split, split, split within the party. Malaz, I'm only, well, I'm not, your law is passed, Malaz, rightly so, according to me, that let the commission, but the commission doesn't have to, they can't disregard basic principles that you are giving symbol to a party on the strength of those 39 Whose disqualification is pending? And that issue is pending before this. That's pending. And I said to them, please stay your hands. They said, no, but Supreme Court has said that we have to go on. That's how the symbol was give, is given. See that injustice caused to us. I just make the point, Muller, and not go further. Is it, according to you, there was no information in the possession of the EC yeah. Yeah. to show that there are rival groups yes. and it yes. has to be satisfied. Yes. Now, Muller, no. The petition. Can you just rephrase your submission, Mr. Sibyl, again on this point? Well, I'm saying, well, the, the jurisdiction of the commission will commence when the commission has it in its possession information on which it is satisfied that there are two rival factions within a political party. Right. And in this case, what is the. Now, now well, let's kindly see. Therefore, in the context of this 10th scheduled, well, now, just, just that, that proposition. In the context of the 10th schedule, the only way you can get a symbol is when there are two rival factions within the party. It has nothing to do with the 10th schedule. No, this has nothing to do with the 10th schedule. Correct. Right. So, Manas, there has to be, there has to be a, a, a faction emerging. Take, for example, Manas, majority of the people in the 10th schedule 
let's uh, are with with Thakre. Let's assume all 55 are with Thakre. Then also para 50 willis can be can be invoked. By somebody making an application. Because 15, ref para, ah, para 15 refers to the party. Ah. That's right. So one of the split has to refers to correct. The split has to take, I, I'm only I, I'm right. agreeing, I'm saying exactly right. that split has to take place within the party. Right. That split did not take place on 21st June or immediately thereafter. Never took place. A petition is filed on the 19th of July. Correct. correct. Just note that. 19th of July. 19th of July. 19th July. Absolutely. Correct. Right. And on the 18th of July, it is alleged what is what is submitted along with the petition is minutes of meetings. Now, what do you have here? No time, no place, no uh, date is given 18 July, no summons. I suppose this is a meeting of the Pratinidhi Sabha of the Shiv Sena. So it must be known to everybody where the meeting is going to be. Summons must be sent like we sent to them. Right. What they do is they give a translation of the minutes of the Pratinidhi Sabha. And in the minutes, they show some resolutions that have been passed. Minutes, as your Lordship will know, is after the meeting. It can't be before the meeting. Right. It has to be after the meeting. So there is the minutes of the Pratinidhi Sabha. And there are also minutes of the Karya Karni. That your Lordship will see at page, page 10. Again, minutes. Again, when it is held, what time is it held, where it is held? Yes, they say it happened, it is held in Bombay. This petition is filed on 19 July. He says that the petitioner was elected as the senior leader and senior Mukhineta. The minutes are dated 27 July. This is what they filed. So 19 July, they could not have known what would happen on 27 July. And that also minutes of meeting. These are the only two documents with the commission. That's why I read paragraph 15. These are the two documents with the commission in respect of to prove that there are two factions arising. And second document was submitted during the course of hearing. But be that, I don't want to go into that. I'm just only interpreting 115, 15. This is the documents in their possession, information on the basis of which election commission is satisfied that, is, that there are two factions within the party. So minutes of meeting. So mother, these are the two documents with the commission. Now, if you read paragraph 15, this represents a two factions in the party, the minutes of meeting. That's how the election commission Mullahs got jurisdiction, according to them. And Mullahs, this is a final order. This is kindly just look at it. I can understand if the commission says lead evidence. I can understand. Please prove your case. On this basis, a final order is passed, which is the subject matter of challenge in the other proceeding. That's how they got the symbol. So what does the governor do? What does the election commission do? And this is the evidence. And then we have to, uh, you know, get, we must ensure, we must trust that all institutional authorities function in accordance with the law. And if this kind of manipulation takes place, Manat, in the processes of, of institutional decision making, where we go, Manat, I, where we will go, I don't know. I am done, Malads. I just want to make one, 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 one statement. I stand here not for this case. I may lose it. I may win it. That's another matter. But I stand here, Malads, for the protection of what we so, what is so close to our heart. Institutional integrity and to ensure that processes of constitutional processes survive. Otherwise, if your lordships endorse such a position, it will be the death knell of what we have cherished since 1950. Thank you. Thank you. Sir.